Hello. Welcome on back to my channel. I hope y'all are doing well. Today I've partnered up with Peri Para to present you all with this makeup tutorial on our beautiful model, Allie. The eye makeup is gonna be smoky, the cheeks will be blushing, and I finish off the look with a glossy rose-toned lip. So without further ado, if you wanna learn how I created this look right here, then keep on watching. So to begin, I'm using the Tatcha Water Cream to prep or model skin with. Allie did inform me that her skin type is on the oilier side, so I find that this cream does a really nice job at adding in that moisture, but without weighing the skin down or making it look or feel greasy throughout the wear of the makeup. It's very thin, very, very thin, and lightweight, so I just use a tiny bit and lightly press it into the skin. Now that we have her skin prepped and hydrated, I'm using the Mario Surreal Skin Foundation along with a color corrector from Huda Beauty. And what I'm doing is I'm mixing the two together before applying it onto the skin with a brush. So let's talk about this for a second. The reason I've mixed in a small amount of that color corrector is to shift the undertone of the foundation. Had I just used the foundation alone, it would have been too yellow for her. Her skin has these red undertones to it, you know, right now because she spent some recent time in the sun so by mixing in a little bit of a red color corrector or a red cream blush or you can even use a red lipstick you're able to alter the tones of your current foundation rather than you know running out and buying a whole new shade you know what i mean it's a quick and easy fix that allows us to get this seamless blend to add some warmth back to the skin, I'm using this Makeup by Mario Soft Sculpt, <laughs> I can't say, Soft Sculpt Shaping Stick. And this is in the shade Medium Dark. And I'm applying this on with a blush brush onto the different areas of the face. I wanna add structure and dimension. So along the perimeter of the forehead, the cheekbones and jawline. But something you may notice here is how I'm applying this on, which is impressing motions, really pressing this product in, allowing this cream formula to warm up to the skin and once I have a general placement of the product, I'll head over to a clean makeup sponge to further press and blend this in with. The beauty about working with a cream formula, guys, is, you know, let's say versus a liquid or a powder, there's a lot of play time with this. You can work around the product and continue to build it up as much as you'd like. And the reason I like using a sponge to finish the blend is because it kind of meshes this, um, this bronzing cream into the foundation while also picking up any excess product that's not needed, which is what's giving us this natural uh, skin-like finish that looks so, so beautiful. Now for concealer, I'm using this Natasha Denona High Glam Concealer in the shade N9, and I'm applying this onto the under eye area in a triangular shape from the very inner corner of the eye, right along that, that nose bridge, and then back up towards the temple, following her lower lash line upwards. And then of course, you'll see me blend this in with our, um, with our sponge, excuse me, I couldn't think of the word, but if you're someone who wants to highlight the rest of the face by applying this concealer, you know, onto the center of the forehead and down the center of the nose and chin and all that, now would be the time to do so. But that's not really the direction I'm wanting to take today. I really want her beautiful skin to shine through. So I've kept the overall look pretty natural, but as for the under eyes, both her and I love a bright, full coverage under eye, and that's exactly what we're gonna get. So once I have this blend I'm taking the one size translucent setting powder and using this to set that concealer into place by pressing it on with a powder puff. You want to make sure you're quick with this step. Don't wait for that concealer to crease up and all that. Just get right up in there after blending and set that product into place. And this will give us a beautiful, bright, blurred under eye that's only going to get better as we later add blush and and other product, but in the meantime, I'll follow the very same steps on the other eye, applying the concealer, blending it out, and then setting it with the powder. Okay. 
Okay, so the under eyes are concealed. So next up, I'm using this Patrick Ta Beauty Blush in the shade She's Blushing and using this to add some color to the cheeks. What I love about this blush shade is that it's one of those colors that doubles as a blush and a bronzer. And what I mean by that is you can use it on the apples of the cheeks to give it a sun-kissed effect, but you can also use it in the hollows of the cheeks to add a little bit of shadow and structure, which isn't something you can typically do with, let's say, a... Um, like a baby pink blush or a coral blush so yeah anyway what i'm doing here is i'm taking the translucent powder we used a moment ago underneath the eyes and i'm using it to bake with along the jawline moving right along to the brows i'm using the anastasia beverly hills brow Wiz in the shade medium brown i start by brushing the brow hairs down to spot out the uh, you know the sparse areas and then little by little with a very light hand fill those areas in back and forth back and forth brushing the product through taking a step back seeing where i need to apply more product and then getting right in there again to repeat the steps By the time I'm done here, the brow still looks very natural. It, it, it's a little fuller and has a bit more definition and shape, but overall, I'm very happy with how it turned out. So I'm just gonna take the Benefit Clear Brow Gel here to lock those brow hairs into place, giving it a clean and polished look that'll last all day. What I'm gonna do is complete the other brow off camera real quick and then start on the eye makeup using this shade here from the Urban Decay Naked Cherry Eyeshadow Palette and dusting this across the complete upper lid. I didn't realize, guys, until after I filmed this that this palette has been discontinued, so I'm sorry about that. But the good news is I'm only using three shadows from this, which is a light peach, a cranberry, and a deep brown. And those are pretty standard shades that can be found amongst many different palettes and possibly ones that you already have. Next up, I'm dipping into this shade here and focusing this placement on the outer corner of the eye before diffusing it out. By the way, uh, real quick, the brush I'm using here is just one of those, uh, the, you know, those standard brushes that come in the ABH palettes. It's double-ended, so it has a fluffier side, which is what I'm using to blend out the shadow. And then there's this more dense side, which works great to pack on pigment or smoke out the lower lash line, which is what you'll see me do here. Using the same two shades we used on the upper lid, I'm smoking out the lower lash line too. I think this is a, a really beautiful way to incorporate color into a smoky eye. It's still wearable, but the, the hint of cranberry tones complements her eye color so well. Now, the only other brush I'm going to use here is an angled brow brush, which I'm using to pick up the dark, cool brown in this palette and placing it right there along her lash line with precision. Because I'm not using eyeliner today, this is taking its place by adding in that hint of drama at the lash line, making this look even more sultry. After this, I'm taking this loose golden shimmer from Anastasia Beverly Hills and dusting this onto the center of the upper eyelid for a little uh, razzle-dazzle moment. I think it adds so much more dimension to the upper lid and kind of transforms this color story that we have going on into being this beautiful rose gold eye look. I don't know, it, it's such a subtle difference, but it really elevates the look. Now for mascara, I'm using the Mac Stack Mascara and I'm running this through her upper lashes, really getting in there and being generous with this because mind you, we didn't use any eyeliner today and I am going to be using false lashes. So to get a seamless transition between her natural lashes and the falsies, I'll need to make sure there's a hefty coat of a mascara here. As for the falsies, the ones I'm using are from Mardell. It's in their style called Pumpin, which is a part of their active lash line. Doesn't it just take this look to a whole other level? I, I love how it amps up the drama. And I do like to lift the ends of the lashes here, guys, upwards while the glue is drying and my client is looking downwards. This is a great tip that I encourage a lot of people to do when they're applying on their falsies because you see what happens is a lot of the times, especially if you wear your hair down and it's a frame in your face, is the weight of your hair or even the weight of your lashes if they're pretty long will pull the eye downwards, which isn't the most flattering. So by lifting the ends upwards while the glue is drying, we're reinforcing that support for a lifted, more open-eyed effect. But 
Yeah, as you saw there, I applied some mascara to the bottom lashes and now I'm wiping away that powder that we've let bake here. And it leaves behind the most sheer hint of brightness that complements her jawline and cheekbones so beautifully. Now real quick, what I'm gonna do is take this blush from Patrick Tall Beauty in the shade if she's wanted and pop this right onto the cheeks. I wasn't planning on doing this, otherwise I, I would have done it earlier when we were working on the complexion, but now that the eye makeup is done and I'm seeing how beautifully those burgundy tones are on her, I wanted to incorporate it into the rest of the makeup. It's one of my favorite shades. It looks incredible on all skin tones. I'm talking all skin tones, but keep in mind it is very pigmented, so a little goes a long way. Next up, using this Makeup Forever highlighter in the shade Anywhere Glimmer, I'm applying this to the highest points of her cheekbones down the center of the nose and Cupid's bow. This is a newer launch from Makeup Forever and I have been loving it. Now, I will say between you and I, for the price tag it's at, I do think they fell a little short with the packaging. It just feels kind of, I don't know, like, flimsy dare i say <laughs> but as for the product itself it's phenomenal when it comes to shimmers and highlighters no one does it like makeup forever they're one of the best in the game their highlighters never look chalky or overly glittery or anything like that they just make the skin look super luxe and expensive and who doesn't like that so Moving on to the lips, I'm starting out with this Peri Para Ink Velvet Lip Liner in the shade 01 Rose Nude and using this to line the borders of her lips with. I'm going to be using one of their lipsticks on top of this, but this makes for the perfect base to build on top of. It glides on without tugging or pulling, and I like that this formula doesn't pill up either. You know how some lip liner formulas get kind of weird when you layer on top of it? Well, I don't have to worry about that with this formula. You could even use it if you wanted to, to fill in the complete lip, which is kind of what I'm doing here more towards the outer corners. This will really help everything stay in place and extend the longevity of your lip products throughout the day. But once I have a general placement of the liner, I'm taking the Peri Para Ink Velvet Liquid Lipstick in the shade 17 Rose Nude and applying this right on top. This really is the star of today's show. If you haven't tried these lipsticks yet, I highly recommend them because I've never tried a formula quite like these. They're super pigmented and dry down to a soft matte velvet finish, but they feel like I don't even know how to explain it. It doesn't have that drying feeling that most liquid lipsticks have. It feels almost like a lip balm. It's hydrating and cushiony, kind of like a mousse, and you can layer it up without it cracking. The formula is super unique, and this color is beautiful. I feel like it's universally flattering and goes perfectly with the rest of our makeup look today. Now, I do like a glossy finish, as you know, so I'm gonna take the Peri Para Ink Glassing Lip Gloss in the clear shade and popping this right on top for a high shine finish. You always hear me say everyone needs at least one good clear gloss in their makeup bag and this is a great option. So if you're going to check out the liner and the lipstick I used, I also recommend checking out their glosses. They're amazing and super affordable too. In fact, every product I used from this brand for this lip combo today is under 10 bucks and they're even running a sale between now and December 17th on their Amazon store where they're up to 25% off. So yeah, super, super affordable. Check it out. I'll put the links down below and let me know what you think. But in the meantime, to finish off this look, I'm using the Melt Hydro Grip Set and Refresh Spray to set and lock this makeup into place, which makes this the final step in how I created this makeup look on her naturally beautiful mom. I hope you all enjoyed today's tutorial. If you did, be sure to give this video a big old thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. You can also check out more of my work on my Instagram at Painted by Spencer. And until next time, I'll see you soon.